I'm going to be going through the. I need to angle that down more. We're going to be going through the trap bar deadlift. The trap bar deadlift is a really nice middle ground uh, between your traditional hinge, which I've already made a few videos about, in which we really hinge back through the hips and more of a squatting pattern. So it's really a nice transition between the two because the trap bar more than anything teaches us how to really drive through the floor and push the floor away. I think it's uh, much more helpful to think about pushing the floor away with your legs as you, you know, try to stay as tall and upright as possible in a deadlift. Keeping in mind that we still wanna keep the hips relatively high, we still wanna keep that tension through the hamstrings but we do want that nice bit of leg drive. So I almost describe this as uh, like a standing leg press. The only thing is we don't wanna sit our hips right down like we would with a leg press or a goblet squat because then we're just placing undue pressure on the knee. We're actually gonna lose tension by doing that. And tension creates stiffness, which is gonna create that power. The more stiff and stable we are, the more force we're gonna be able to transfer through the floor. It's just gonna come boom, nicely down. So the, again, the same rules apply as they pretty much always do with our hinge, and that is going to be that the feet are just gonna stay in line with the hips. Now, I don't wanna go out here because I don't want anything like this happening. So a really easy cue to think about when you are deadlifting, but especially with the trap bar deadlifting, is that you want to create a house. So I have the foundation of my house, nice sturdy flat floor, flat feet. Okay, I'm gonna drive my toes down, I'm gonna spread them apart, big feet create a nice wide stable base. As I come down, I know when the walls of my house to collapse. We know that just instinctively looking at this, it looks bad, it doesn't look strong. So I'm going to come here, I'm gonna create the walls of my house, and I'm going to drive out. Now, I don't need to excessively drive out, because I don't need to get super low. I don't need to create a huge amount of external rotation to completely open the hips. I just need to create a relative amount to get my glutes and hammies switching on and creating, again, that stability through the floor. As I come down, I'm gonna come down tall. I don't wanna come down sloppy and then try to find a position here. I might as well just adopt that ideal position straight away. So. I'm going to make my arms long. I don't want to retract or shrug because that's only going to reduce my range of motion, which is going to mean I have to get lower and lower and lower to the floor. If my hips drop lower, I lose power. So long arms, chin up and slightly in. It doesn't have to crush in. Just think about pulling your chin back like a boxer. I pull my chin back. So feet planted, wide base, reach the hands down. I'm gonna come down as tall as I can. I still wanna let my hips reach back. I don't want to squat into my movement. I want to keep weight firmly on my heels, weight coming back into that midfoot and heel. I take my grips, good. I draw the shoulders down, I brace out. I'm going to pull the floor apart. If I imagine that there's a crease in a carpet on the floor, I'm gonna use my feet either side of that crease to pull it apart. So I pull apart the crease in the carpet. Here, tall, chin up, in, long arms. Get rid of that crease in the carpet, big breath, big brace, push. As I push, we don't wanna fall onto the inside of the foot we continue driving and pulling that crease apart. We create external rotation and tension. To reverse, to come down, I don't just boom, let my knees shoot forward. I hinge at the hips and keeping the arms long, we come back to reset. So again, here, arms long, chin up, in, come down, solid walls on your house. Pull the crease apart, big breath, big brace, push, Hips first, arms long, and down. 